The internet is a global stage, but it has no single boss, no ultimate ruler. It's a network that connects different countries, each with its own set of laws and regulations. This often leads to conflicts, especially when these laws clash as countries butt heads over whose rules should apply. Hello everyone, I'm Professor Mark Rabowski, and today we're going to dive into the complex and often chaotic realm of internet jurisdiction. Let's start by rewinding to 2013. In France, there was an uproar over some anonymous Twitter users posting anti-Semitic tweets. The French users took Twitter to court, demanding that these identities of the anonymous users be revealed. Here's where it gets tangled. Twitter is an American company operating under U.S. laws, where the First Amendment protects freedom of speech, including speech that might be considered hateful. Twitter also has an obligation to keep its data private. But in France, hate speech is illegal. Obviously, Twitter officials were probably not personally fine with hate speech. But here's the thing. If they outed this user, it could have started something messy. Imagine this. Twitter gives in, and the next thing you know, other countries are lining up asking for names. Like, picture Russia going, hey, who's that person tweeting stuff about Putin in Ukraine? That's a violation of our laws. But despite all this, a court in France was like, nope, you gotta hand over the information. So Twitter either had to cough up the information, which they ultimately did, or face banishment from France. This case really makes you think, can one country's rules apply to a company in another country? How far does a nation's legal arm stretch across the internet? This kind of stuff is happening more and more. Why? Each country has its own unique playbook for the internet. Our existing conflict-solving tools are pretty outdated for the digital age, and with nearly 200 countries, finding a universal solution is like finding a needle in a haystack. The stakes are high while we're stuck figuring this out. This uncertain legal landscape can lead to businesses being reluctant to invest and innovate. Plus, legal disputes across borders are draining time and resources in both the corporate world and the government sector. What's worse, regular folks, like you and me, might get caught up in legal issues for stuff that's totally fine in our country, while others are left high and dry when they get wronged online. In this lecture, I'm going to take a deep dive into some really intriguing stuff. We will explore conflicts between countries over the internet, how different places think about controlling the internet, and why the usual ways to fix these clashes sometimes just don't cut it. Plus, we'll cover some ideas on how we might sort out these messes. First up, let's talk about some real-world examples of these internet battles. You've probably heard of Julian Assange, the guy behind WikiLeaks which is a controversial website that publishes news leaks and classified government documents provided by anonymous sources. Both Britain and the United States want to take him uh, to prosecute him and throw him in prison for a long time. But it's a bit of a puzzle whether they can actually do that legally. It's not clear if he's broken any laws or even if the governments have the right to go after him. Sanja's supporters say he's only being prosecuted because he exposed U.S. wrongdoing and that his prosecution is an assault on journalism and free speech. Assange has been fighting an international legal battle the past several years over this, and it's still ongoing. In a separate matter, there is an interesting case from 2008. A British guy living in Spain had a website hosted in the Bahamas selling trips to Cuba to folks in Europe. The catch? His website's domain was registered in the United States, and that got him into hot water with the American government because of their embargo against Cuba. And here's another example of a jurisdictional conflict involving the internet. A German court couldn't get its hands on evidence from a German guy's Facebook account for a burglary case. Why? Because even though Facebook has an office in Germany, the data they wanted was sitting on a server all the way in the United States. These cases really show how tangled things can get. Even in the United States, judges can't always agree on who has the right to call the shots in cases involving the internet. Like this one time, two judges in California had totally different takes 
on whether they could hear a case involving a Korean plaintiff and an Australian defendant who were both using U.S. social media. Why are these issues so common and such a tough problem to solve? Because unlike the physical world, where borders are clear, the internet is a borderless beast. It's a maze where content and users crisscross the globe, making traditional legal boundaries almost irrelevant. We're grappling with a reality where a content creator or business can be located in one country, the server located in another country, and the audience or customers everywhere. In other words, content can come from anywhere, reach anywhere, and involve anyone. It's like trying to catch smoke with your bare hands. And right now, every country has its own set of rules and regulations. The United States generally treats the internet as a commercial highway, focusing on trade and removing roadblocks to that trade. Then there are the cultural guardians, countries that mold their internet laws to mirror their societal values. And of course, there's the global cooperation model, which is a utopian vision of worldwide harmony and in internet governance. But as you can guess, getting everyone on the same page is a Herculean task. Finally, some people think the internet should just manage itself. No laws are needed. But let's get real, no government is going to be that hands-off. Almost every country now regulates the internet within the framework of their political, legal, moral, and cultural values. So here's the million dollar question. How on earth do we sort out all of these different rules and ideas about regulating the internet when countries bump heads? It's like trying to find a middle ground in a room where everyone's speaking a different language. How do we achieve a compromise? A bunch of solutions have been tossed around to solve this global puzzle. One idea is like creating a universal playbook, an international agreement setting clear rules for what's acceptable and what's not acceptable online, covering both the legal and illegal stuff. It would also set up a global governing body to oversee these rules. Sounds neat, right? But here's the catch. Getting nearly 200 countries to agree on anything is like trying to organize the biggest group project ever, and we all know how group projects go. This kind of thing has been tried with governing space and the moon, and let's just say it didn't go really smoothly. Some countries didn't join the party, or the rules were so wishy-washy that they didn't really do much. Plus, imagine trying to mesh these global internet rules with each other's country's own laws. It's like trying to blend oil with water. Alternatively, we could try to devise some kind of one-size-fits-all test to figure out who's in charge when it comes to internet stuff that crosses borders. We could use something like an effects test. In this scenario, a country would step in and say, hey, even though this didn't happen within our borders, it's impacting us and we should have a say in it. While this may sound straightforward, getting everyone to agree on this kind of universal rule would be a big challenge. Another proposed solution is the use of filtering. Basically, countries using tech to block stuff they don't want crossing their digital borders, like France blocking anti-Semitic tweets. Some places are already doing this stuff, but it's like playing whack-a-mole. People find ways around these blocks. Plus, it kind of goes against the whole spirit of the internet as this open place for sharing stuff. There's also the option of letting content providers and users decide, in their terms of service, which country's laws they'll follow if there's a dispute. But getting a worldwide thumbs up on this is tough, especially since it might take some power away from governments and governments don't like to give up power. Of course, we could also just do nothing, but that means these headaches will keep popping up. So what's the best move? The truth is there's no one-size-fits-all fix or magic solution. Internet rules are complicated, and everyone wants a say, including governments, tech giants, and everyday netizens. Internet law is tricky, and it looks like it's going to stay that way for a while. Well, this has been Professor Grabowski, and thanks for watching.